Well, welcome back. In this session, we're going to start working with elevation rasters, or also called digital elevation models, or DEMs. And what I want you to do is go to the data folder of the NRM338 website and download gtopo.zip. And after you unzip it, you'll have two elevation rasters. So here's an elevation raster that covers most of Alaska, and here's an elevation raster that covers the Yukon and British Columbia. So typically with elevation rasters, when you start, they're in longitude. You'll note the cell size is really a small cell size. And that's because basically when we start, they're in longitude and latitude. So if we look at, here it is, a spatial reference geographic coordinate system, WGS 1984, so the cell size is in decimal degrees. So with this particular raster, the cell size is every 30 seconds, there's an elevation estimate. So if we take 30 seconds divided by 60 seconds in a minute, divided by 60 minutes in a degree, that's our cell size in decimal degrees. So basically, this data set, the GTOPO 30 data set, every 30 seconds, there's going to be an elevation estimate. And one of the first steps will be we've got two rasters. We're going to merge those two together to create one continuous raster. So in order to do that, we need to know what is the pixel type and depth. So here our pixel type is signed integer and the depth is 16 bit. So we're going to use that information with the Mosaic to New Raster Geoprocessing Tool. Okay, so we're going to merge together our two rasters. So we need to specify for the output, the type is 16-bit signed because the input rasters will be 16-bit signed. So then we can drag our input rasters by pressing the Control key and selecting both layers, and then dragging both those layers into the Mosaic to New Raster tool. Okay, and then the last piece of information is number of bands. So that is how many pixel values are there inside each pixel or each grid cell. So with elevation rasters, there's always one elevation value inside each grid cell. And then OK, and that will produce a mosaic from these two input rasters. Okay, so the output from the Mosaic to New Raster tool is a single a raster, and now it's basically a seamless raster covering Alaska, Yukon, British Columbia, etc. And it's still in longitude and latitude. And if we want information like what's the um, percent slope of every cell, what we need to do is have our elevation raster in some planar units like meters or feet. So the next step will be to run the project raster tool to create a raster that's in linear units in meters in this example. Okay, so in this case, we'll project it into the Alaska Albers equal area projection. And when we're projecting a raster, it will actually make an empty um, grid cells in this projection and then fill in those empty grid cells by resampling from our original raster, was it in longitude and latitude? So all these points are merging as we go to the north. So what we'll do is we'll say we want bilinear interpolation. So as it does the resampling, take the weighted average of the four closest pixel and then fill in our empty cells that are in the Alaska Albers coordinate system with the weighted average of the four nearest pixels. And then as a user, we would specify our output cell size. So once again, if we just look in longitude and latitude, as we go north, the cell size will become smaller and smaller because we're merging towards the North Pole. So here we'll have square cells and we'll say, let's have 500 meter cells. Actually, let's say 1,000 meter cells. And then OK. So the result will be 1,000 meter wide by 1,000 meter high cells in the Alaska Albers coordinate system. OK, so when we started our rasters, we're in longitude and latitude. And after we run the project raster tool, 
I put it in a new data frame, and this new data frame, this raster is in the Alaska Albers coordinate system, so it's in meters. Okay, so now since we have square pixels that are a thousand meters wide, a thousand meters high, and each cell represents the elevation above sea level, we can do um, some symbolization, some cartography. So we'll make a hill shade from this elevation raster. So we can use the hill shade tool to make a hill shade. Okay, so many of the tools for working with elevation rasters are in the Spatial Analyst toolbox. So we need the Spatial Analyst extension in order to use these tools. So if you get a message that the tool is not licensed, what you need to do is go to the Customize menu and then Extensions and make sure the Spatial Analyst extension is checked on. Then we can use that tool. Okay, so for most of the tools we're going to use this week, the input raster will always be the raster that's in planar coordinates. So not the raster that you originally start with that's in longitude and latitude, but the raster that's in meters. So that typically will be the input raster. And then the output will be, we'll just call it hillshade.tiff. And then you as a user decide where the sun is in the sky. So I'll put the sun at 180 degrees or due south. And how high is the sun in the sky? So I'll put it uh, 25 degrees above the horizon. So that will create a hill shade simulated. The sun is at 180 degrees or due south, and it's 25 degrees above the horizon. So by default, there's very little contrast in the hill shade. So we can increase the contrast by going to Layer Symbology tab. And under the stretch, we'll make it standard deviation and stretch all the pixels within two standard deviations of the mean. So that will improve the contrast. So now we can see the Alaska range, the Brooks range, uh, the Chugach range, and Wrangell St. Elias, etc. Okay, the other thing we can do is what's called hypsometric um, shading. We'll use our elevation raster and assign it a color ramp. So if we click on our color ramps, typically what you want is snow at high elevations. So either this first color ramp or the second color ramp, I'll pick the first one and then OK. So that gives us that type of shading. And then what we could do is under symbology, we could adjust the contrast stretching. So let's say standard deviation and one. So this color ramp will be assigned to all pixels within one standard deviation of the mean. If you're above one standard deviation of the mean, the pixel will be snow colored. And if you're less than one standard deviation of the mean, the pixel will be that color. So that gives us more snow in the Brooks range and the Alaska range. And then what we could do is we'll adjust the transparency so we can see some of the hill shade underneath this elevation raster. So if we go to properties, under the display tab, we could adjust the transparency. So for example, we'll make it 50% transparent and then OK. So then we can see some of the hill shade underneath and we'll make it even more transparent. So let's make it 70% transparent and then OK. And then we can see the hill shade underneath our elevation raster, which is coded as a semi-transparent color ramp. And then the final step is we'll make the ocean some ocean color. So what we can do is go to the data frame properties. And under the frame tab, we could specify what color we want our data frame to be. So I'll just pick blue as an example. And that gives us the ocean some color blue. So basically, once you have an elevation raster and it's in meters, you can make um, a hypsometric coloring will basically 
high elevation will be snow color, low elevation will be some um, green color, and then we can make the ocean, our data frame, an ocean color. Okay, so that's probably enough for one session. In the next session, I'll teach you about doing raster analysis with this elevation raster.